Hey everyone, welcome back. We've got some great news of the Volvo EX90 electric SUV. Now, Volvo is the latest to include bi-directional charging in its EVs. The feature will turn the EX90 into a mobile generator that can be used during blackouts. This is a wonderful feature to have in your car because if you lose power inside your home, you will be able to power your home using your car. This is absolutely incredible. I love the direction that we are going in with electric vehicles. We're developing more capabilities than we can ever expect it. Five to 10 years ago, it would be so abnormal for anyone to possibly consider the idea that your car could potentially power your home in the case of an emergency. Well, with the Volvo EX90 electric SUV, you will be able to do this exact thing. So let's try to understand some more information about this. So Volvo's upcoming flagship electric vehicle, the EX90 SUV, will feature bi-directional charging capabilities with enough battery capacity to power a customer's home, the company announced. Now, bi-directional charging is quickly becoming a highly sought-after feature in many electric vehicles, and it works exactly like it sounds. With unidirectional one-way EV chargers, electric flows from the electric grid into the electric vehicle. With bio-directional two-way EV chargers, electricity can flow in both directions, in both ways. The Volvo EX90 will have its official debut in November the 12th, so customers in selective markets will be able to use the car's lithium-iron batteries to power their home's portable devices, the company has said. It can also be used to sell energy back to the grid. How awesome is that? Now, Volvo is not alone in boosting the abilities of fleets of EVs operating as a virtual power plant of sorts. General Motors and BMW are both partnering with California-based Pacific Gas and electric company around the idea of vehicle-to-grid technology. Now, the idea is to use bi-directional charging equipment to push and pull energy from electric vehicles at any given time. In essence, it treats high-capacity batteries not only as a tool to power EVs, but also as backup storage cells for the electric grid. This could come in handy during a blackout since some automakers are selling their EVs as mobile generators. Volvo hasn't revealed much about the EX90 energy capacity or onboard power, but we should expect to get more answers in a couple of weeks. So this is actually quite exciting. We will get some more information on this new Volvo electric vehicle. Now, something very important to understand about this vehicle is that it isn't fully revealed yet. We've seen concept, but we haven't seen a full image of the vehicle. I have seen renders of the vehicle and it looks like a typical electric vehicle that has previously been used as a gasoline vehicle. These are what the renders have shown me. It shows that not just Volvo, but Mercedes, BMW, they're taking their ICE vehicle and turning them into electric vehicle. They look almost the exact same as a internal combustion engine vehicle. The difference is typically these vehicles have a more simplistic front end, which means that there's no grill because there isn't any engines. The renders do seem like Volvo could be taking a step into the same direction, but I hope I'm wrong. I hope these renders are incorrect. Now, apart from this, Volvo also switched naming plans for the new EX90 at the last minute. But let's try to understand. Now, obviously, we know Volvo has been gearing up for the presentation of the new range top-in SUV on November the 9th. Volvo is providing new details about the EX90 with the brand's new CEO, Jim Rowan, explaining how the company decided on the name of the first car that will come out under its leadership. Speaking to Auto News, Rowan said it was brand's familiarity that prompted Volvo to stick with the authentic nomenclature for the EX90 rather than making the switch to a new wordy name as was the company's original plan under his predecessor Haken Samuelson. So yes, there you have it. Volvo did change plans at the last moment, but to be quite honest, this is the but to be quite honest, most electric vehicles from typical ICE companies, these vehicles do have complicated names. Similar to the Mercedes electric vehicle, they have some complicated name that just sounds way too confusing. Too many Qs, too many Ss. EQS, SQE, I don't know. All of that stuff, it just gets a bit confusing. I like something simple like the Tesla Model 3 or the Polestar 2 or the Rivian R1T. I don't know, those just seems very simple. I don't want it to be overcomplicated. 
Now, to be fair, the Volvo EX90 doesn't seem that complicated. In my mind, the name doesn't seem that complicated. However, it can feel a little bit easily to forget. You can easily mistake that for ES90. But I also fully understand what Volvo is doing. Their brand, their customers are used to Volvo naming their vehicles exactly like this. And that seems to work for them for a very long time. So naturally, they would like to continue with this name and format. And fair enough, if it works for them, then I'm happy for them, of course. But what's perhaps most important for me is that we've got no idea what this vehicle will look like. Additionally, this vehicle is coming with so many amazing features. Now, this bi-directional charging technology will also be capable of charging other electric Volvos. Keep that in mind. And the firm's charge management system could reduce energy costs for users by charging during periods of low demand. When energy demand is high, the car can also sell energy back to the grid. Although these features will depend on particular market rules. Different countries, they have different rules. But they're bringing a host of awesome features to this car, including new LiDAR setups, light detection and ranging, which uses a scanning laser light to detect objects ahead. Volvo claims the tech can pick up a tire line in, in the road up to 120 meters ahead of the car's path. For example, while it picks up pedestrian up to 250 meters down the road, the detection model works at highway speeds as well in daylight and nighttime. Unlike a camera-based system that is not required for LiDAR to work, so the level of protection offered is the same regardless of driving conditions. Accidents with severe outcomes can be reduced up to 20% with overall crash avoidance improved by 9%. Very good. Now in the EX90, the LiDAR system is accompanied by 5 radars, 8 cameras and 16 ultrasonic sensors. The latter includes parking sensors, for example, while much of the others will still be using pedestrian detection and lane keep assistance. Plus convenience features such as surrounded view when parking and semi-autonomous adaptive cruise control. Wow, gotta say, this all does sound quite exciting. And when this video is debut, I want to make a full reaction to it on the channel as well. So we're going to have some fun with that. So thank you for watching, subscribe to see more. And of course, I will see you in our next video.